Gospel of John the Beloved In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of mankind, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to tell of the light, so that all men through him might believe. John was not that light, but was sent to tell of that light, that was the true light, which enlightens everyone that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own people, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who received him he gave power to become the children of God, those who believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and lived among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John told of him, crying out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is before me, because he was before me. And of his perfection we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has ever seen God except the only begotten Son, who is in the heart of the Father. He has revealed him. This is the story of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, not denying, but confessing, said, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you that prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. And those who were sent by the Pharisees asked him, Then why do you baptize, if you are neither the Christ nor the prophet Elijah? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands among you one whom you do not know. It is he who comes after me, but is before me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things happened in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is before me, because he was before me. I did not know him so that he would be revealed to Israel. That is why I came, baptizing with water. And John testified, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining, it is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I saw this, so I testify, he is the Son of God. The next day, John and two of his disciples stood, looking upon Jesus as he walked, and he again said, Behold the Lamb of God! And the two disciples heard this and followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, saw them following, and said to them, What do you seek? They said, Master, where are you staying? He said, Come and see. They came and saw where he lived, and stayed with him that day, because it was about four in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He quickly found his brother Simon and said, We have found the Christ. Andrew brought him to Jesus. When Jesus saw Simon, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Peter. The next day Jesus desired to go into Galilee, and there he found Philip, and said to him, Follow me. 
Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and of the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael replied, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, saying, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Master, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said to him, You believe because I said I saw you under the fig tree? You shall see greater things than this. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I tell you, after this you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Three days later there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When wine was lacking, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Dear woman, what am I to do with you? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. There were six water pots of stone sitting there for the purifying customs of the Jews, holding between twenty and thirty gallons each. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of ceremonies had tasted the water that was made into wine, not knowing where it was from, though the servants who drew the water knew, he called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man starts by setting out the good wine, and when men have drunk plenty, then the cheaper wine. But you held back the good wine until now. This first of miracles Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, openly displaying his glory, and his disciples believed on him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and stayed there a few days. It was almost the Jewish Passover, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple found sellers of oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers sitting there. When he had made a whip of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said to those who sold doves, Take these things away! Do not make my father's house a marketplace! His disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then the Jews said to him, What sign can you show us that you rightfully do these things? Jesus answered to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It took forty-six years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. So when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scriptures and the words which Jesus had said. Now while he was in Jerusalem, on the feast day of the Passover, many believed in his name, when they saw the miracles he did. But Jesus did not fully reveal himself to them, because he knew all men, and did not need any testimony of man, for he knew what was in mankind. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night, and said to him, Master, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a man is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I told you, 
you must be born again. The wind blows where it goes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell its origin or its destination. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, saying, Are you a ruler of Israel and do not know these things? Truly, truly, I tell you, we speak what we know and testify to what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No man has ascended up to heaven except he who came down from heaven, indeed the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, just so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to damn the world, but so that the world through him might be saved. He who believes on him is not damned, but he who does not believe is already damned, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the damnation, that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, nor comes to the light, or else his deeds might be rebuked. But he who acts truly comes to the light, so that his deeds may be seen to be works of God. After this, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he lingered with them and baptized. And John was also baptizing in Enon near to Salim, because there was an abundance of water there, and people came and were baptized, for John was not yet imprisoned. Then there arose a question about purifying between some of John's disciples and the Jews. And they came to John and said to him, Master, he who was beyond Jordan with you, of whom you testified, behold, he baptizes, and all the people go to him. John answered, saying, A man can receive nothing unless it is given to him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I was sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, takes great joy at the bridegroom's voice. So this is the fulfillment of my joy. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly, and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard is what he testifies. And no man receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony has verified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not merely measure out the Spirit to him. The Father loves the Son, and has given all things into his hand. He who believes on the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. Instead, the wrath of God remains on him. So when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard how Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples did, he left Judea, going again into Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. Then he came to Sychar, a city of Samaria, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, being weary from his journey, sat at the well at about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, because his disciples had gone to the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink from me, a woman of Samaria, since the Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans? Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. 
Where do you keep that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his children and his cattle? Jesus answered her, saying, Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become a well of water in him, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I will never thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said, Go, call your husband, and come back here. The woman said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right to say, I have no husband, because you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. D tell me how it is that our forefathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that Jerusalem is where men ought to worship. Jesus said, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor even at Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not know what you worship. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes, and is now here, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father, in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Christ comes. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this moment his disciples returned, and were astonished that he talked with the woman. But no one said, What do you want? Or, Why do you talk with her? Then the woman left her water pot, and went into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all I ever did. Is this not the Christ? Then they left the city, and came to him. Meanwhile his disciples implored him, saying, Master, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. So the disciples said to each other, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said, My sustenance is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Don't you say, There are four months until the harvest. Behold, I say to you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest, and he who reaps receives wages, and gathers fruit for eternal life, so that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. And in this is the saying true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap where you did not work, other men worked, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him, because of what the woman said, who swore, He told me all I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they pleaded with him to linger with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own words, and they said to the woman, Now we too believe, not because of what you said, but because we have heard him ourselves, and know that he is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now after two days he left there and went into Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Then, when he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all that he did at the feast in Jerusalem, because they also went to the feast. So Jesus came back to Cana of Galilee, where he made the water into wine. And there was a certain nobleman, whose son was sick in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judah into Galilee, he went to him, and begged him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken to him, and he went his way. Just as he was going down, his servants met him and said, Your son lives. Then he asked them the time when he began to mend. And they said to him, Yesterday afternoon, at one o'clock the fever left him. 
the father knew that it was at that same time that Jesus said to him, Your son lives. So he himself and his whole household believed. This is the second miracle that Jesus did when he came out of Judea into Galilee. Afterwards there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep market, there was a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, since it had five porches. In these lay a great multitude of handicapped folk, of the blind, the lame, the withered, all waiting for the moving of the water. At certain times a messenger went down to the pool and stirred the waters. Whoever stepped in first was healed of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there who had been handicapped thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had long been that way, and he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The handicapped man answered him, Sir, when the water stirs, I have no one to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steps in before me. Jesus said, Rise, pick up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was healed, picked up his bed, and walked on that very Sabbath day. So the Jews said to him who was healed, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered, He who healed me said to me, Pick up your bed and walk. Then they asked, What man told you, Pick up your bed and walk? And he who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had walked away through the multitude in that place. Afterwards Jesus found him in the temple and said, Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, or a worse thing may happen to you. The man left and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him whole. For that reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father works today, and so I work. So the Jews sought to kill him even more, not only because he had broken the Sabbath, but also said that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing through himself, except what he sees the Father do, because whatever he does, the Son does likewise. For the Father loved the Son, and showed him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you may be astonished. Just as the Father raises up the dead and enlivens them, even so the Son enlivens whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, so that all should honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who has sent him. Truly, truly, I tell you, he who hears my word and believes on him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into damnation, but passes from death to life. Truly, truly, I tell you, the hour comes and is now when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear shall live. Just as the Father has life in himself, so has he granted it to the Son to have life in himself and has granted him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming, in which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. Of my own self I can do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but instead the will of the Father who sent me. If I testify alone for myself, my witness is not true. There is another who testifies for me, and I know that the testimony that he witnessed about me is true. You sent to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not require testimony from man for myself, but I say these things so that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater testimony than that of John, for the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do, testify for me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who has sent me has testified for me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his shape. 
and you do not have his word living in you. For whom he has sent, him you do not believe. Search the scriptures, because you think you have eternal life in them, but they testify for me. Yet you will not come to me so that you might have life. I do not receive honor from mankind, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes only from God? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you. Indeed, it is Moses in whom you trust. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how shall you believe my words? After this, Jesus went over the Sea of Tiberias, which is called Galilee. A great multitude followed him, because they saw the miracles he performed on the diseased. Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, near the time of the Jewish Passover. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company had come to him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread so that all these can eat? And this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, More than six months' wages would not buy enough bread for all of them to have even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, Here is a boy who has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what is that among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now it was a grassy place, so the men sat down, and there were about five thousand of them. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he divided it among the disciples, and the disciples to those who had sat down, and they likewise divided the fishes as much as the multitude wanted. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up what is left over, so that nothing is lost. So they gathered the leftovers together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves that remained over and above what had been eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is truly that prophet who is supposed to come into the world. But when Jesus saw that they meant to come and force him to be a king, he departed again into a mountain, alone by himself. When evening had come, his disciples went down to the sea, and entered into a ship, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. Though it had gotten dark, Jesus had not come to them, and the sea arose because of a great blowing wind. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, and drawing near the ship, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they gladly took him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at their destination. The following day, the people who stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one his disciples had entered, and that Jesus did not go with his disciples into the boat, and that his disciples had gone away alone, even though other boats from Tiberias came near the place where, after the Lord had given thanks, they ate bread. So when the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. When they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Master, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I tell you, you do not seek me because you saw the miracles, but because you ate bread and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures into everlasting life, that the Son of Man shall give you, for God the Father has sealed him. Then they said to him, How shall we do the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you show us, so that we may see and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I tell you, Moses did not give you that bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven 
and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, forever give us this bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes on me shall never thirst. But I told you that you have even seen me but do not believe. All who the Father gives me shall come to me, and he who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the Father's will who has sent me, that of all whom he has given me I should lose none, but should raise them up again at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that every one who sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and that I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured against him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I came down from heaven? So Jesus answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No man can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draws him, so that I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. So every man who has heard and has learned from the Father comes to me. Not that any man has seen the Father, except he who is of God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I tell you, he who believes on me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, so that a man may eat from it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So the Jews strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said, Truly, truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him as the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so it is that he who eats of me shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, but not as your forefathers ate manna and are dead. He who eats of this bread shall live forever. He said these things in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. For this reason, many of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard teaching. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured about it, he said to them, Does this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man rise to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh gives no profit. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, That is why I told you that no man can come to me unless it is granted to him by my Father. From that time many of his disciples turned and walked with him no more. Then said Jesus to the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and are sure that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve? But one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, because among the twelve it was he who would betray Jesus. After this, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. 
At this time, the Jewish Feast of the Tabernacles was approaching. So his brothers said to him, Leave here and go into Judea, so that your disciples may also see the works that you do. No man does anything in secret if he himself wants to be known. If you really do these things, show yourself to the world. For his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but any time is your time. The world cannot hate you, but me it hates, because I testify that the works in it are evil. You go to the feast. I am not going to the feast yet. My time has not yet come. When he had said this to them, he still remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone, then he also went to the feast, not openly, but secretly. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? There was much murmuring among the people about him, for some said, He is a good man. Others said, No, he just deceives the people. However, no man spoke openly about him for fear of the Jews. At about the middle of the feast, Jesus went into the temple and taught. And the Jews were astonished, saying, How does this man have an education, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall discern whether the teaching is of God or if I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? But none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The people answered and said, You have a devil! Who seeks to kill you? Jesus answered them, I have done one work, and you are all astonished. Now Moses gave you circumcision, not because it is from Moses, but from the forefathers, and you on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath day, so that the law of Moses is not broken, how can you be angry at me for making a man completely whole on the Sabbath day? Do not judge according to appearance. Judge instead with righteous judgment. Then some of those from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the Christ? How is it that we know where this man is from? But when Christ comes, no man knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out in the temple as he taught, saying, You know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come on my own. But he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. Then they tried to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour had not yet come. Many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ comes, will he do more miracles than this man has done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things about him, and so the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to arrest him. Then Jesus said to them, Just a little longer will I be with you, and then I will go to him who sent me. You shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, there you cannot come. Then the Jews said among themselves, where will he go that we cannot find him? Will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What kind of talk is this when he said, You shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am, there you cannot come? In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. For he who believes on me, it will be as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He spoke this about the Spirit that they who believe on him should receive, for the Holy Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So many of the people, when they heard this saying, said, Truly this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, how can Christ come out of Galilee? The scripture has said that Christ comes of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was. So there was a division among the people because of him, and some of them wanted to seize him, but no man laid hands on him. Then the officers reported to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, 
Why have you not brought him? The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered them, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? These people who do not know the law are cursed. Nicodemus said to them, He who came to Jesus by night, being one of the disciples, Does our law judge any man before it hears him and knows what he does? They answered him, Are you from Galilee too? Search, look it up, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went to his own house. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he again came into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and Pharisees brought him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst of the people, they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded that such should be stoned. But what do you say? They said this to tempt him, so that they might have grounds to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote with his finger on the ground, as if he did not hear them. So when they continued questioning him, he got up and said to them, Let he who is without sin among you cast the first stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And those who heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, left one by one, beginning with the eldest, until the very last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman, standing in the midst of the crowd. When Jesus got up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those who accused you? Has no man condemned you? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said, Nor do I condemn you. Go, and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You testify for yourself. Your statement is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even though I testify for myself, my record is true, because I know where I came from and where I go. But you cannot tell where I am from and where I go. You judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who testifies for myself, and two is the Father who sent me and testifies for me. Then said they to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you should also have known my father. Jesus spoke these words in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, because his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus again said to them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. Then the Jews said, Will he kill himself? After all, he says, Where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I told you that you shall die in your sins, because if you do not believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus told them, Indeed I am the same as I told you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge you for, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them about the Father. Then Jesus told them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own. But I only speak the things my Father has taught me, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, because I always do what pleases him. As he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, 
then you are indeed my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How can you say, You will be set free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. The slave does not live in the house forever, but the son always remains. So if the son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus told them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I have heard from God. Abraham did not do this thing you do. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus told them, if God were your father, you would love me, because I came forth from God, nor did I come on my own, but instead he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are from your father, the devil, and you will do the lusts of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and did not remain in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks on his own, because he is a liar and the father of lies. So because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you shows me guilty of sin? And if I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore you do not hear them, because you are not from God. Then the Jews answered and told him, Do we not speak truly that you are a Samaritan and have a devil? Jesus answered, I do not have a devil. I simply honor my Father, and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I tell you, if any man keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews told him, Now we know that you have a devil. Abraham is dead, and so are the prophets. But you say, If a man keeps my word, he shall never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And are you greater than the prophets, who are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him. But I do know him, and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him, and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it, and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you say you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and left the temple, going through the midst of them, and thus passed them by. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, Master, who sinned, this man or his parents, so that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents have sinned, except so that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is still day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had spoken thus, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said to him, Go! wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went his way, washed, and came back seeing. So the neighbors and those who had seen him before said, Is this not he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered, 
A man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then they said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. He who before this time was blind, they brought to the Pharisees. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not of God, because he does not keep the Sabbath day. Others said, How could a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They spoke again to the blind man. What do you say about him, how he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called his parents. And they asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How is it that he now sees? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. As for who has opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, so ask him. He can speak for himself. These are the words his parents spoke, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if any man confessed that Jesus was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. That is why his parents said, He is of age, so ask him. Then they again called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise for your sight. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. I do know one thing, that I was blind, but now I see. Then they again said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not hear. So why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, why, here is an astonishing thing, that you do not know where he is from, and yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if any man is a worshipper of God and does his will, him he will hear. It has not been heard of since the world began that any man opened the eyes of one who was born blind. This man could do nothing if he was not of God. They answered and said to him, You were altogether born in sins, and you think to teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I have come into this world so that those who do not see might see, and so that those who see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin, but you now say, We see. Therefore, your sin remains. Truly, truly, I tell you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but instead climbs up some other way, is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he takes his own sheep out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but will flee from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus spoke this parable to them, but they did not understand what he told them. Then Jesus told them again, Truly, truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come so that they might have life, and so that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he who is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose sheep are not his own, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees, because he is a hireling, and does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known by mine. As the Father knows me, even so do I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, which are not of this fold. I must also bring them, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. That is why my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, so that I might take it again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. I have received this commandment from my Father. So again the Jews were divided about these sayings. Many of them said, He has a devil and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, These are not the words of one who has a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? It was in Jerusalem, in winter, at the Feast of the Dedication, as Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch, when the Jews came up around him and said, How long will you leave us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify for me. But as I told you, you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give eternal life to them, and they shall never perish, nor shall any snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who gave them to me, is greater than all, and none is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews again took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, We do not stone you for any good work, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he to whom the word of God came called them gods, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him, whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, you blaspheme, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not do the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So they again tried to take him, but he escaped out of their grasp, and went away again beyond Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. And many came to him and said, John did no miracles, but everything that John spoke of this man was true. And many believed on him there. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. This was the same Mary, who anointed the Lord with ointment, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So his sisters sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not fatal, but is instead for the glory of God, so that the Son of God might be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, Yet when he had heard that Lazarus was sick, he remained two days longer where he was. Then after that he said to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews just tried to stone you, and you go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? 
If any man walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walks at night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. He said these things, and then he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go, so that I may awake him out of sleep. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he shall do well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go too so that we may die with him. Then when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been buried for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them for their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now, whatever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said to her, Your brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again, in the resurrection, at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who must come into the world. And when she had said so, she went and secretly called her sister Mary, saying, The Master has come and calls for you. As soon as Mary heard that, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet arrived in town, but was still where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with Mary in the house to comfort her saw her rise up hastily and leave, they followed her, saying, She goes to the grave to weep there. Then when Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, who opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died. So Jesus again groaned in himself, and came to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay over it. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you, that if you would believe, then you would see the glory of God. Then they removed the stone from the tomb. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I say this on behalf of the people who stand by, so that they whom you have sent me may believe. And when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he who was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Release him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews who came to Mary, and had seen the things that Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What do we do? This man does many miracles, so if we leave him alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away our position and our nation. And one of them, 
Caiaphas, the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, so that the whole nation does not perish. He did not speak this on his own, but because he was high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation, not only for that nation, but also that he should gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. Then they planned together from that day forward to put him to death. So Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went into a country near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and remained there with his disciples. It was almost the time of the Jewish Passover, and many went up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They sought for Jesus, and said among themselves as they stood in the temple, Do you think that he will not come to the feast? At this time the chief priests and Pharisees had commanded that if any man knew where Jesus was, he should reveal it, so that they might arrest him. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them who sat at the table with him. Mary took a pound of very costly ointment of spikenard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, filling the house with the scent of the ointment. Then one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for ten months' wages and given to the poor? He did not say this because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and carried the money bag and what was in it. Then Jesus said, Leave her alone. She has kept this aside for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you will not always have me. Thus many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not only for Jesus' sake, but also that they might see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests also plotted that they might kill Lazarus, since many of the Jews left and believed on Jesus because of him. On the next day many people who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel, who comes in the name of the Lord. When Jesus had found a young donkey, he sat upon it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him, and that they had done those things to him. So the people testified who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead. For this reason also the people met him, because they heard that he had done this miracle. So the Pharisees said among themselves, Do you see how you accomplish nothing? Look, the world has gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and had a request for him, saying, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Jesus answered, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He who loves his life shall lose it, and he who hates his life in this world shall keep it through to life eternal. If any man serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, my servant shall also be. If any man serves me, my father honors him. Now my soul is troubled, and what can I say? Father, save me from this hour? but it was for this cause that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the bystanders who heard it said that it thundered. Others said, An angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, 
This voice did not come because of me, but for your sakes. The judgment of this world is now. Now the prince of this world shall be cast out, and if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to me. He said this signifying what death he would die. The people answered, We have heard in the law that Christ remains forever, so how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, For a little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, or else darkness may come upon you, for he who walks in darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may be the children of light. Jesus said this, and left, and hid himself from them. But even though he had done many miracles before them, they still did not believe on him, so that the saying of the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled, in which he said, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah also said, He hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their hearts, so that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Isaiah said these things when he saw his glory, and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many among the chief rulers also believed on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, fearing they would be put out of the synagogue, because they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried out, saying, He who believes on me believes not on me, but on him who sent me, and he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, so that whoever believes on me should not remain in darkness. If any man hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, because I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has one who does judge him. The word that I have spoken, that shall judge him in the last day." because I have not spoken on my own, but only as the Father who sent me commanded what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his commands are life everlasting, so whatever I speak, just as the Father says to me, so do I say. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart this world and to go to the Father, having truly loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. When supper was over, the devil put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and would go to God, rose from supper and laid aside his clothes and took a towel and wrapped himself with it. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, wiping them with the towel he wore. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you actually mean to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I do, you do not now understand, but you will understand later. Peter said, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is washed needs only to wash his feet, but is otherwise completely clean. And you are clean, though not all are clean. For he knew who would betray him, so he said, Not all are clean. So after he washed their feet, and replaced their garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you speak well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example, so that you should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly I tell you, 
the servant is not greater than his Lord, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, it will be happy for you if you do them. I do not speak of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but so that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I am telling you before it comes to pass, so that when it has come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I tell you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. When Jesus had said this, he became troubled in his spirit and testified, saying, Truly, truly, I tell you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked at each other, unsure of whom he spoke. Leaning against Jesus at that moment was one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. So Simon Peter beckoned to him that he should ask whom he spoke of. Leaning against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a sop after I dip it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Afterwards Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus to Judas, What you do, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew why he had said this to him. Because Judas had the money bags, some of them thought that Jesus had merely told him to buy what was needed for the feast, or to give something to the poor. Then Judas, having received the sop, immediately went out, just as night had fallen. Therefore, when Judas had gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, then God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall immediately glorify him. Little children, just a little longer am I with you. You shall seek me, and just as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now do I also say to you, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where do you go? Jesus answered him, Where I go, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. Peter said, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, Will you indeed lay down your life for my sake? Truly, truly, I tell you, the cock shall not crow until after you have denied me three times. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. There are many mansions in my father's house. If this was not true, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and welcome you as one of my own, so that where I am, you may be also. Where I go, you know, and the way I go, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you go, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. If you had known me, then you should have known my Father also. From now on you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said, Have I been with you so long a time, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me 
that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I tell you, he who believes on me shall also do the works that I do. He shall do greater works than these, because I go to my Father, and whatever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may remain with you for ever, the Spirit of truth himself, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you just a little longer, and the world will see me no more. But you do see me. Because I live, you shall also live. At that time you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me, and he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will reveal myself to him. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my sayings. The word which you hear is not mine. It is the Father's who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still here with you. But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you everything, bringing everything to your memory, everything that I have said to you. I leave you with peace. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard how I told you. I go away and come again to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I go to the Father because my Father is greater than I am. Now I have told you before it comes to pass, so that when it has come to pass you might believe. After this, I will not talk with you much, because the Prince of this world is coming, but has no part of me, yet so that the world may know that I love the Father, and that I do just as the Father commands me. Get up, we go to it. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that is not fruitful he takes away, and every branch that is fruitful he prunes so that it may be more fruitful. Now you are clean through the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, just as the branch is not fruitful on its own unless it abides in the vine, nor can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, will be very fruitful. But without me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast away as a branch and withers. Men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you. You can ask what you desire, and it shall come to pass for you. Here is how my Father is glorified, in that you are very fruitful. This is how you will be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commands, you shall abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and abide in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy might abide in you and so that your joy might be full. This is my command. Love one another just as I have loved you. No man has greater love than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends. 
if you do whatever I command you. Afterwards, I will not call you slaves, because the slave does not know his Lord's business. But I have called you friends, because everything that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, so that you should go and be fruitful, so that your fruit should abide, and so that whatever you shall ask from the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. You are not of the world, because I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the word I told you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, then they will also persecute you. If they have recorded my words, then they will also record yours. They will do all this to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done works among them that no other man did, they would not have sinned. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. This only came to pass, so that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth himself who proceeds from the Father, he shall testify about me. You shall also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you these things, so that you would not fall away. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time comes when whoever kills you will think that he does God's work. They will do these things to you, because they have neither known the Father nor me. But I have told you these things, so that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you so. I did not tell you these things from the first, because I was with you. But now I am on my way to him who sent me. And none of you asks, where do you go? But because I have told you these things, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is best for you that I do go away, because if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you will no longer see me. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot handle them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, because he shall not speak on his own, but whatever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, because he shall receive from me, and shall reveal to you. All things that the Father has are mine. That is why I said, He shall receive from me, and shall reveal to you. Just a little longer, and you shall not see me. And then just a little later, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said among themselves, What is he telling us? Just a little longer, and you shall not see me, and then just a little later, and you shall see me, and because I go to the Father. So they said, What is he saying? A little longer. We cannot tell what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they wanted to question him, and said, Do you ask each other why I said, Just a little longer, and you shall not see me, and then just a little later, and you shall see me? Truly, Truly, I tell you, that you shall weep and wail, but the world shall rejoice. You shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman in labor has anguish, because her hour has come. 
but as soon as she has delivered the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of her joy that a man is born into the world. So you will have anguish now, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and no man shall take your joy from you. In that day you shall not question me. Truly, truly, I tell you, whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So far you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, so that your joy may be full. I have told you these things in parables, but the time comes when I shall no longer speak to you in parables. Instead, I shall clearly reveal to you the will of the Father. In that day you shall ask in my name. I do not tell you that I will pray to the Father for you, because the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father and came into the world. Again I tell you, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, See, now you speak plainly and not in parables. Now we are sure that you know all things and that no man needs to question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered, You believe now? Behold, the hour comes, yes, it is now here, in which you shall be scattered, every man on his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that you might have peace in me. You shall have tribulation in the world, but be cheerful. I have overcome the world. Jesus said these things, and then lifted up his eyes to heaven, saying, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may also glorify you, because you have given him power over all flesh, so that he should give eternal life to all whom you have given him. This is life eternal that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have revealed your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things and whatever you have given me are from you. For I have given them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you indeed sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but instead for those you have given me, because they are yours. All of mine are yours and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are still in the world, and I go to you. Holy Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, so that they may be one as are we. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. I have kept those you gave me, and lost none of them, except the Son of Damnation so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Now I come to you, and I say these things while still in the world, so that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but instead that you should keep them from the evil of it. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Just as you have sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they might also be sanctified through the truth. Neither do I pray for these alone, but also for those who shall believe on me 
through their testimony, so that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, so that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory which you gave me I have given them, so that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and you in me, so that they may be made perfect in one, and so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given to me, will be with me where I am, so that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me. I have declared your name to them, and will continue to declare it, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and so that I may be in them. After Jesus said these words, he and his disciples went over the brook Kidron to a garden there, which he and his disciples entered. Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often withdrew there with his disciples. Judas had received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, and came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. So Jesus, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus told them, as well as Judas who betrayed him and stood with them, I am he. Then, just as he told them, I am he, they fell backward to the ground. Then he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these go their way, so that his saying might be fulfilled. Of those whom you gave me I have lost none. Then, having a sword, Simon Peter drew it and struck Malchus, the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Then Jesus told Peter, Sheathe your sword! Shall I not drink the cup my father has given me? Then the band and the captains and officers of the Jews took and bound Jesus, and led him away first to Annas, because he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who counseled the Jews that it was expedient for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple who was known to the high priest, and went with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood outside the door. Then the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, spoke to the girl who kept the door, and brought Peter in. Then the girl who kept the door said to Peter, Are you not also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Servants and officers who had made a fire of coals stood there warming themselves because it was cold, and Peter stood with them, warming himself. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in the synagogue and in the temple, where the Jews always go, and I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me what I have told them. Behold! They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered, If I have spoken evil, say what was wrong. But if good, then why do you strike me? Now Annas had sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Simon Peter stood warming himself. So they said to him, are you not one of his disciples also? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being kin to the one whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Then Peter again denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the hall of judgment. It was early, and they themselves did not go in, fearing that they might be defiled, and that they might not eat the Passover. 
So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, We would not have delivered him to you if he were not a criminal. Then Pilate told them, You take him and judge him according to your law. So the Jews told him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, so that the words of Jesus might be fulfilled, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate again entered the hall of judgment and called Jesus, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this thing on your own, or did others tell you this about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. So what have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not now from here. So Pilate said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. I was born to this end, and I came into the world for this cause, so that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and told them, I find no fault at all in him, but you have a custom that I should release one to you at the Passover. So do you desire that I release the king of the Jews? Then they all cried out again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas instead. Now Barabbas was a robber. So then Pilate took Jesus and whipped him. The soldiers braided a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a purple robe on him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. So Pilate again went out and told them, Behold, I bring him out to you, so that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold, the man! So when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate told them, You take him and crucify him, because I find no fault in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he makes himself out to be the Son of God. So when Pilate heard that, he was even more afraid, and again went into the hall of judgment, and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you, and have power to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no power at all against me, unless it was given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. And from then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself out to be a king speaks against Caesar. So when Pilate heard that, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was time for the preparation of the Passover at about noon, when he said to the Jews, Behold, your king! But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar! So he then gave him to them to be crucified. They took Jesus and led him away, and he, bearing his cross, went out into a place called the Place of the Skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two others with him, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the title was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. 
Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, The king of the Jews, but instead, He said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then after they had crucified Jesus, the soldiers took his clothes and also his coat, and made four parts, with a part for every soldier. But the coat was seamless, woven from the top down. Therefore they said between themselves, Let us not tear it, but instead cast lots for who gets it, so that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. By the cross of Jesus there stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. So when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he told his mother, Dear woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, so that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. A vessel full of vinegar was set there, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the spirit. Because it was the preparation, and so that the body should not remain on the cross on a day of high Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate to have their legs broken, and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came, and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other who was crucified with him. When they came to Jesus, and saw that he was dead already, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers, with a spear, pierced his side, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who saw it testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he speaks truth, so that you might believe. Because these things were done, so that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture that said, They shall look on him whom they pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate permission to remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took the body of Jesus. Nicodemus also came, who from the first came to Jesus by night, bringing about one hundred pounds of a mixture of myrrh and aloes. Then they took the body of Jesus, and wound it in linen cloths with the spices in the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden was a new sepulchre, where no man had yet been laid. So they laid Jesus there for the Jewish preparation day, because the sepulchre was nearby. Mary Magdalene came to the sepulchre early, on the first day of the week when it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the sepulchre. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. As they ran together, the other disciple outran Peter, and came to the sepulchre first. Stooping down and looking in, he saw the linen grave clothes lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came after him, and went into the sepulchre, and saw the linen grave clothes lying there. The small cloth that was around his head was not lying with the linen grave clothes, but was folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who came to the sepulchre first, also went in, and he saw and believed. Now at this time they did not know the scriptures, telling that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their own home, but Mary remained, standing outside the sepulchre, weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, Woman, why do you weep? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned back and saw Jesus standing there, but did not know that it was Jesus. 
Jesus said to her, Woman, why do you weep? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Master! Jesus said to her, Do not touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father. Go to my brethren, and tell them that I ascend to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. It was still the first day of the week, and that evening, when, because they feared the Jews, the doors were shut where the disciples were gathered, Jesus came, and stood in their midst, and said to them, Peace be unto you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. Just as my Father has sent me, just so do I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven, and whoever's sins you keep, they are kept. But one of the twelve, Thomas the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he told them, Until I see the print of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Eight days afterwards, his disciples were inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came then, though the doors were shut, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger, and search my hands, and reach here with your hand, and thrust it into my side. Do not be faithless, but believing instead. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God! Jesus told him, Thomas, you have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet have believed. In the presence of his disciples, Jesus truly did many other convincing things which are not written in this book. But these things are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and so that believing you might have life through his name. After these things, at the Sea of Tiberias, Jesus again showed himself to the disciples, and he showed himself in this way. There were together there Simon Peter, Thomas the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you too. They went out and immediately got into a ship, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He told them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find fish. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw the net because of the multitude of fishes. So the disciple, beloved of Jesus, told Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his fisher's coat around himself since he was naked and cast himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the little ship, dragging the net with the fishes, because they were only a hundred yards from land. As soon as they came ashore, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid upon it with bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. Simon Peter went and drew the net to land, full of one hundred fifty-three large fish, and though there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat. Knowing that it was the Lord, none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Jesus then came, and took bread and fish, and gave it to them. 
This was now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he had risen from the dead. So when they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, Feed my lambs. He said to Peter a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, Feed my sheep. He said to Peter a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I tell you, when you were young, you dressed yourself and walked where you wanted. But when you are old, you shall stretch out your hands, and another shall dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying the death by which Peter should glorify God. After he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. Then Peter turned around and saw following them the disciple whom Jesus loved, the one who leaned upon him at supper, and said, Lord, who is it who betrays you? Seeing him, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Jesus said to him, If I desire that he lingers until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying spread among the brethren that this disciple should not die. But Jesus did not tell him that he would not die, but if I desire that he lingers until I come, what is that to you? I, who testify about these things, and wrote these things, am that disciple, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are many other things that Jesus also did, which, if every one were set down, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen.